from what I can see already, he's such a strong hero. Um, and can, maybe could it be the new Chrono? So I'm not sure. But uh, all I can say is uh, Banner, that hero, is very strong. But at the same time, the, the uh, evil activities picked up the silhouette. Another hero allowed in competitive mode now, uh, as well as Parasite getting some few changes. But uh, already, from what I can see here, uh, Legion looking a lot better sort of in terms of drafting. Picked up the torture as well. So a lot more sort of focus on the sort of early aggression and sort of laning phase as well, which I think something that was really sort of um, an issue for him in game one. So I'm looking forward to this game already. Yeah, I, I think Swindermons told me a while ago that if you're not a super competent drafter, if you're not somebody that's going to study up on the metagame and you're not going to be able to read your opponents and trap them or, or whatnot, play heroes you're comfortable and pick heroes that have stuns and damage. <laughs> and so far I'm seeing the Legion team actually take care of that in a lot of ways. So really liking uh, what's coming out of the guys from Throws of Throws. And this elephant pick is something that definitely catches my eye. I mean, tell me why I should be afraid of this hero. Well, first of all, this hero in Tier Men before it was getting nerfed was being called worse than Kronos, and I can definitely vouch for that. His um, his E, Dream of Madness, was the main issue, but also his suicide potential. I mean, a lot of people sort of think that Kefulifman is run as a jungle, but he really does excel in the suicide role uh, because he's so hard to really kill. But when it comes to sort of mid to late game, uh, the Dream of Madness is, a, is something that was such a big issue, but um, they have changed it, so it doesn't go from Magic Immunity anymore. But I mean, this hero is still so strong, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to the competition um, sort of play and the competitive sort of light he'll get as well as the silhouette and Paris actually uh, I was really looking forward to cast because obviously we're, we're casting in the new, and playing in the new patch and all these sort of different heroes we get to see uh, and Kefilifon is one hero that I'm really looking forward to see um, particularly in that suicide role um, and, and this hero is just really really strong um, it's got everything you really could ask for in, in a suicide good escape mechanism hard to kill as well as the potential for, for counter kills and solo kills on his own when he gets level 6 um, so yeah definitely watch out out for this Kefilif, and I'm, I'm almost certain it's going to have a big impact in this game. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you, you talk about that Dream of Madness and the way that applies a debuff on you, very similar to the one that Puppet Master actually puts out there. But instead of Puppet Master, who was first overall banned, by the way, it puts it out on everybody that's actually in an AoE area looking at you and stuff. So it's incredibly strong, but. In any case, we'll have to see how it actually goes. Second set of bands going to be coming out now with Pebbles, Rally, and Engineer being taken out by the Legion team. They're really wanting to make sure to eliminate some of those possible initiators that uh, could be occupying the middle lane as they likely already have a suicide as well as a short lane carry. And just making sure that whatever the Legion team throws in the middle lane, it's not going to be contested by a super strong laning like somebody like that Engineer. Um... Whereas on the other side, the Hellborn team getting rid of some of those very strong short lane carries like Shadow Blade, Doctor Repulsor, and Clanks. So, I mean, Shadow Blade and Clanks, those ones are definitely coming a little bit out of left field for me. Yeah, but I mean, obviously both of these are allowed in competitive. Now, I think Clanks was allowed in before, but he did get a slight buff in terms of mana costs uh, from his Q and his R as well, I think. Uh, and Shadow Blade obviously allowed in competitive mode now. And it's one of those bar uh, sort of bands where you don't really know how it's going to work in competitive. I mean, it could be really bad, but at the same time, it can be absolutely dominating. Um, yep. So maybe the other team are just sort of scared to sort of play against it. So it's just a lot easier to, you know, use one ban against it and um, they are in need of or you know um the legion side are in need of a carry so that's why evil activities did decide to ban it out um but for the legion side they their draft is definitely uh, considerably improved in terms of game one um, but they're still most likely going to be mostly picking up a carry here and i think shadow blade would have been a nice pickup so a good ban coming out from Felich uh, as the captain of evil activities yeah and I'm liking the amount of stuns, and I'm liking the amount of potential aggression from the Legion team, but they need something to kind of hedge their bets. Because if they pick up another support hero right now, and they go all in Bruce. on the early aggression, if they slip up and start feeding one too many kills, if they're not able to break base or completely shut down the enemy Madman and Silhouette, which both those heroes are extremely hard to shut down completely, they're always going to find some kind of farm, then they're going to be on a complete timer in this game. And if it ends up going any later than 25, 35 minutes, shrunken heads start coming out, all of a sudden you've got major issues. So be really wary of that here from the guys from the Legion team. And uh, I'm really interested to see what they're going to pick up for the last pick. If they do go for a short lane carry or if they go for, indeed, uh, something like another uh, lane partner for their Magmas or a lane partner for this gauntlet. Um, so we'll yeah, see. Yeah, I mean... 
Yeah, I mean, they could easily use jungle with a full of I did say I preferred it in the suicide lane, um, just because he's just so strong. Like, he needs those early levels. And yeah, he can farm the jungle, but that doesn't really mean he farms it that effectively. Um, and just put him in the suicide lane is just almost a, a one suicide lane. But they are going to uh, most likely run it as a suicide and just run two dual lanes with the torture and demented shaman. Um, so it's not going to be any type of sort of late game, which is a little bit of an issue, like you said before. Uh, they're definitely an, an absolute massive advantage in the early game, and if they really want to take this game. But at least you know it most likely won't be a 15-minute concede, uh, because hopefully they should be most likely get some kills. Um, in terms of the help on side, they're most likely looking for a mid initiator, but well played by uh, Krezilla or Krez Killer, uh, banning out most of the mid initiators like Pebbles, Rally. Um, those kind of heroes. So it depends on what they're going to pick up here. Yeah, certainly are uh, available options like maybe a Kraken uh, is one that's leaping out at me here. But that's a really niche hero. There's actually not a lot of players that are able to play that one, especially with a portal key um, to the effect of somebody like Limp, who is extremely good at playing that one. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> He's completely right. Uh, they do have a very much so pub lineup and. I'm actually interested to see if they're going to run the Demented Shaman Cthulhu event combo. Uh, oh, yeah. I completely forgot about that. That's a possibility, oh, but Pharaoh going to be coming out. That's fun. Interesting. Yeah, I like that pickup. I mean, I would have preferred the Tundra pickup, but I know it's one of those heroes that, like you said, like with Kraken, it's one of those niche heroes that you can either play it or you can't. And um, I thought the Tundra would have worked perfectly with the Parasite, but I mean, it, like you said before, it's better just to pick heroes that you're comfortable with. Obviously, we're not playing or we're not seeing top, top teams being played here. So, I mean, it's a lot better to play things you're comfortable with than play, you know, almost better heroes, but, you know, worse off uh, than your, um, you know, comfortable pickers. But, yeah, like you said, the Demented Shadow the Philippe, I completely disregarded that fact. I haven't seen that combo in almost years ago. So, if you it's do see it, it's going to be very uh, hilarious, to say the least. Nostalgic, perhaps. Yeah. But uh, definitely has a lot of aggressive potential there so i would not be surprised to see uh that combo coming out even in the long lane that's oftentimes where you do see it trying to challenge the enemy team's carry relatively early then from there you can throw a gauntlet 1v1 in the middle lane babysit a magnus bottom if you really want to and you've even got the possibility of something like an aggressive tri lane so we'll really see but uh could be even seeing something like because Cthulhu in the middle lane. There's there's just tons of options. There's no possible mm. way to read this Legion team. Uh, Demented Shaman is running top though, so I assume Cthulhu is coming with him. Yes, so it is going to be the Cthulhu uh, Demented Shaman lane. That's going to be so funny to watch. I mean, I remember playing it back with my old friend. Like they, this combo works so so well as well as you know Cthulhu getting some buffs. I mean. His potential definitely has uh, potential to do to work quite well. Uh, Man Man's most likely going to be solo up here, um, so I don't know if they're going to have to get net any kills. Uh, it's going to be an aggressive tri lane, it looks like, or aggressive pseudo tri lane coming out from Hellbomb. Uh, I mean, if, if Legion sort of read this, they could easily defend this because Cthulhuan easily eats itself, see parasites, creeps, and True. and you could even block a few camps as well. And this would crush the Hellbomb uh, lineup actually if they decided to rotate lanes back down bottom, but. Um, they are going to stick with the lane so far because they haven't scoured out where the hell one side is. But yeah, I mean, I'd like to see whether they do rotate once the the lanes are sort of segmented. But. Yeah, I feel like the trap that they could run into is saying we'll leave Cthulhu up top against Madman. That's a fine lane matchup, but rotating the Demented Shaman um, down into the bottom lane along with the Magmus and Torture, I feel like that's not really going to be able to stack up to. Uh, the potential here of this Parasite and the Blitz that are going to be able to get so much aggression and of course Silhouette who's just going to pound in those auto attacks so I, I'm a little bit worried about that I'd rather see the Cthulhu fin and the DS come down here and then throw Magmus up yeah. top yeah I mean, I mean, obviously like lane, a try lane with, uh, with Dementia Shaman is never sort of something you want to have but at the same time if you block the Parasite's camps really it's just a try lane versus a dual lane and, and whoever hero you have a try lane versus a dual lane is always going to be come out in favour of the one who has the try lane it just depends if whether they block out these hard camps from Parasite because if you do that then this Parasite is completely non factor and it'll have to go and um, sort of jungle on his own jungle but Cthulhu already sort of jungling here in the top lane while Dementia Shaman takes over the lane uh, a little interesting strategy already seen out here by uh, the leading side. Yeah, taking advantage of the resources they have available to them. Very smart. And of course, Kufit is going to be able to get that uh, the water spray, I like to call it, from the shield. Um, so being able to put a little bit of damage into Madman, but it did expire relatively quick. 
But I gotta call attention to the warding situation here. You talked about possibly warding Parasite, and that's something that you're gonna see top tier teams like BMG and Sync do almost every single time there's a Parasite in the game. But instead, you see the Legion team actually going for some very pub centric wards. You're gonna get one on the high ground above the rune, you're gonna get one blocking the pull camp. And you've gotta kinda expect perhaps that there is going to be a solo up here. Um, it's certainly a possibility, so I would have much rather waited to see where you actually place these wards um you'd at least want to block out a hard camp in the jungle if you expect the parasite to be there and so placing them a little bit too early it means the parasite's gonna have complete and unrestricted free farm in the enemy jungle and he's gonna be able to then take it from there and apply pressure to either the middle or the bottom lanes so i, I think that this parasite being played by village is just gonna have a really good time yeah, and obviously the infest got buffed up quite recently as well. Once you get it to at least level 3, you actually take no damage on the neutral creep, so it's going to be a lot easier to gank middle or bottom lane. But you see him already rotating over with a Catman Champion. He's starting to turn back, though, because Gauntlet is at his tower. But, yeah, I mean, definitely I think this Parasite is going to be the key player in, in who gets the first blood here in game 1. But I mean, at the same time, on bottom lane, though... Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to kill the trouble. silhouette, and she's already used the tree grapple, but another so. chain reaction... Missed and Catman Champion gonna be coming in from the backside. Torture is in a lot of trouble right here. Blitz gonna be surging forward and Parasite is here with the infest. Already hopped out of the Catman Champion and a nice lava surge coming in. The body block's not gonna be enough though. And looky looky gonna be able to grab the opening kill right there with a takedown on Chris Killer. Uh, and that's what we're talking about. It's the Parasite is going to be the real player in, in terms of the laning phase because, I mean, it's literally like almost a tri lane versus a dual lane here in the bottom lane. It's just depending when Parasite wants to come into the lane and when he does, it's going to obviously be a massive advantage for the Hellborn side. And, and this is why I'd really like to see Legion maybe try and rotate up the lanes. I mean, it's not too late yet. I mean, they're not too far behind. They only lost first blood. Only 100 gold down, and actually they're leading in terms of experience. So, although you know having a Dementor Shaman in terms of a tri lane isn't the strongest, but as long as you block these uh, hard counts from Parasite, it won't be the biggest of issues, honestly. He's coming kind of mid though. He might try and set something up on this gauntlet. Uh, he's just gonna go back to farming while Torture actually rotates middle lane, uh, trying to set something up on this uh, Pharaoh perhaps. Yeah, if he had gotten something better, he might have Ooh. definitely come on in. But unfortunately, Crazy Killer missing another chain reaction stun. And this one's really going to hurt because they would have gotten this kill. And right now, there's no way they should actually get this one. Although, in reaction going to be coming in. I still this, think this, this, this is going to be enough. Oh, wow, yep, it is. I lied. Uh, Parasite and Blitz are coming over, though. So this torture might be in trouble. But they're meant to show just about to here to heal him up. Um, so they do decide. Or they do eventually get the yeah. kill, which is just a little bit of um, sort of persistence almost on the Pharaoh. Uh, if they had TPs from the Hellborn side, that could have definitely gone a little bit haywire for the Legion side, but they do pay off. And, and you know, they're, they're definitely still in this game. He talks about in game one where they almost lost from, from the starting point, and they're definitely still in this game because of the way they've drafted. Obviously, the only issue is when it turns to get into the late game, they don't really have any late game potential. Uh, Parasite is still in this uh, in the enemy jungle. It's something that needs to be addressed, honestly, because whenever he wants to get a gank off, he can get it easily. He's going to get spotted out here by the Demented Shaman, but uh, he might even be trouble, actually. Blitz is coming over. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't have the greatest creep here, and the Vulture Lord going to be able to do a decent amount of damage with the auto attacks at 80, but, you know, with, without a real useful ability in a chasing situation like that, not going to be able to actually secure a kill. Bottom lane, though, Magnus is just being absolutely bullied out of this lane. Silhouette's showing off her new strong potential with the Relentless Salvo, and Magnus going to be going for... The uh, oh. turnaround, oh. yeah, and almost getting it. Magnus is going to be able to get a heal from Demented Shaman, and now it's going to be Blitz that's in some trouble. Torture has the opportunity to redeem himself as they do go into the side oh. here, but a nice tree grapple, and the Log Bola able to get the double stun. And Torture now in some sticky situations. Dimension Shaman's going to have to get over there, but not going to be able to heal him up most likely. And here comes the Catman Soldier, a.k.a. Parasite, oh. looking for Magnus as well, and he's going to be able to get the... Oh. <laughs> the nuke down and just like that the hellborn team able to get a three to one hero kill lead and that was actually really well played coming out from Ferro. it was the tormented so actually they're going in for this demented shaman can he land the hook is the depict is the question oh i think Ferro's just out of range yeah if the creeps weren't in the way i think he'd be going for it right now uh but yeah not going to be wanting to dive a tier two tower at five minutes into the game it's uh, always a recipe for not so much fun. Gauntlet. Yeah, I mean, Gauntlet's kind of in the area. He, he does have that oh. ultimate available. But 
I don't think he's going to be able to kill the Parasite with creeps around and the opportunity to infest those. Uh, how, how are things shaping up here in the top lane, though? That's what I'm really interested in. I mean, we see Kofilipan already sort of winning this lane, but at the same time he did have the advantage. He was uh, sort of 2v1 against this Madman in the sort of first couple of minutes. But I think Madman should be doing a little bit better, honestly. Yeah, he was shut down in the first couple of minutes, but he can easily recover. I mean, Madman's such a strong laner. I mean, Kofilipan's a strong laner as well, but I mean, I don't think either one of them has the potential to kill one of another. But at the same time, I do think um, that... A madman should sort of have the the favor of the lane just because of in terms of creep kills, uh, because of his stalk and barrel roll, perfect creep killing potential. Whereas Philippin doesn't really have a potential to get easy last hits. So now I, I'm a little bit interested with the Kulifin's build. Three points right now into his hook mobility, granting him additional damage, lower cooldown, and of course more absorption of damage uh, with that. But with zero points in his aura and I mean, what are you thinking about this build? Is this yeah, it's, for you? it's no. The the build is the right way to play, honestly. Okay. Not to just call you out and say that's the wrong build, but it is the right build coming out from Kofilim because you need the you might almost max the hookum. I think he should get uh, one more point in hookum and then go for one point in dream of, uh, dream of madness because the trample, yeah, it's, you know, increases the damage done, but the stun is the same, and and that's the main point. You're only increasing damage by sixty every single time um, you you just level up the the stun. He needs one more point in the hookum. I think you should max it out as long as he's sort of you know, utilizing the ability. Actually, he might be in trouble here. Parasite and Blitz are coming over. No, Blitz might be in trouble. Oh, no. Well, Torture no is actually <laughs> going to be the one that's in trouble as he is hit by the Wrath of the Pharaoh. Torture going to go down the impalement, continuing to do some damage, but a double damage. Pharaoh going to be walking away from this situation. No worse for wear. And I mean, um, Hellborn are already in a commanding yeah. lead once again. They've got all the momentum. I mean, and that's the only problem is, is that like it wouldn't be the biggest of issues if Legion had Hellborn's lineup because obviously they have the potential to sort of come back in terms of the late game because they have the silhouette at the moment. But it's actually the the late game sort of oriented lineup. Actually, bottom lane they're going for Magnus and he's gonna fall. But uh, yeah, going back to what I was gonna say, the Madman and Silhouette obviously offering a lot of late game potential and, and they're actually winning the middle lane. Oh, middle lane, Pharaoh's gonna fall. Um, so at least some kind of you know return kill for Legion side but the, the fact of the matter is, is that you know if he gets to sort of 20 25 minutes I mean, that's the sort of you know peak time for this Legion side any time after that then they don't really have any sort of late game potential and I think it's definitely gonna be a big factor on, on who's gonna take this game yeah I think there's gonna be a lot of reliance on Elephant and Gauntlet to actually continue setting up kills and to make sure that uh, as the Legion team continues to pressure the, the enemy team they're gonna be doing it in a safe tower. way so really going to be looking for those two players to be the playmakers and they're going to need to continue knocking down towers gaining map control and starting to shut down the farm of the opposing team because this silhouette is already farming quite well 375 gold per minute and she's got uh, life tomb on top of the full steam boots could be going for the null stone and in fact a mana tube being delivered so this is definitely looking like that null stone which is such a popular item pickup right now yeah, I mean, obviously you've got the the change allowing it to be a lot lot cheaper, and and I really do like the the way the items sort of built now. They have introduced a, a recipe, or are they not introduced recipe? No, they haven't. Sorry, no. I'm not leaking SPT changes, I promise. But um, <laughs> uh, going back to to the Nullstone, though, yeah, it's such a perfect item on Silhouette as well. She really does need the the mana to allow her to use all her sort of spells in conjunction. Um, and, and it's just the perfect item build. Obviously, there's a lot of um, sort of single target spells as well, like Gauntlets, uh, Ulti, as well as the Entangle. Um, so, I mean, Nullstone is just honestly the perfect item pickup and, and a really strong spell, particularly for these sort of squishy carries in the early game. So, um, I really do like the item pickup here coming up from Looky Looky. Legion team doing what they need to do in grouping up and taking down towers. Unfortunately, the Hellborn team doing exactly what they need to do. Dodging the fights and trading towers rather than actually engaging into this early game lineup. If they're able to take even amounts of towers, the Hellborn team comes out way ahead in that situation. Uh, they are essentially getting something for nothing because these towers are going to go down for the Legion no matter what. Um, and right now they're even pressuring a tier 2 going to be forcing the legion to react and if they're able to dictate the pace of this game the legion team's not going to be able to do what they need to do which is going to be creating consistent pressure and making sure that these carries aren't getting farmed up although gauntlet hook going in right here oh. kathulifa going to be able to annihilate him and here's the gauntlet ultimate going out onto madman unfortunately misses the stun onto madman and he should be able to walk away from the situation going to be able to activate the stock has a tp available and he's going to be tp on out of there no problem whatsoever 
Yeah, great hook coming out from Dr. Cruz there. Just hits the silhouette, and silhouette not able to tree grapple, uh, tree grapple in time. So, really well played coming out from Dr. Cruz. And he's like 370 GPM. He's closing on that portal key, and that portal key is definitely going to be a massive factor um, to see if they can really you know, get a few more kills and, and get the advantage they need if they're going to take this game. Uh, and I think he's going to be the, the main playmaker. He's gone for the ghost marches, which is something I probably wouldn't really uh, agree with because Gauntlet definitely needs the, uh, that sort of mana. Uh, and going ghost mods isn't the sort of the way to do that, but uh, it's still it's, it's the portal key is going to be the main issue or the main factor here in this game. He's like around 700 gold away from it, so maybe getting this tier one would definitely help. So yeah, that tier one going to be putting him very close to a possible portal key, and uh, in fact he was just delivered what appears to be Mystic Vestments. Uh, Wild Hunter Parasite is sitting behind right now and of course he can stay in this one for quite some time. Level 4 Infest is quite strong but his utility outside that Infest is relatively low and now they have spotted him indeed getting him trapped in there but he of course regens a little bit and now the Hellborn team is going to be choosing to take the engagement. Wrath the Pharaoh going to connect on 2 right here but here comes Magmus going to be able to get a big eruption off. Down goes Pharaoh. Still not going to be running around in the background but now she's going to be taking a stun. That's the illusion actually. And it's going to be Madman walking away from this situation. The Hellborn team popping some pots, some bottles, and regenning up, and now re-engaging. Cthulhu's been in a bad situation. Going to be taking a stun from Blitz. Going to try to trample his way on Attica, but it's not going to happen. Slowed down to the extent that the Hellborn team are able to walk him down. Finish him off, so it ends up being a one-for-one -one exchange. But the Legion team's push stalled once more. And they're feeling the momentum of this game slip away from them and just up to a point where I don't know if they're going to be able to get it back. Yeah, and I really think it depends on, on this portal key and gauntlet because once he gets that, they can start getting a lot of ganks and without it, there's almost nothing they can really do. I mean, they're trying to take the team fights, which is honestly the, the right you know, the right play. I mean, they're obviously they're stronger in terms of early, in terms of uh, compared to sort of mid or late game. But honestly, a really well play come out from, from evil activities. They, they sort of regen up after the, the first and little bit engagement, and, and Legion just weren't ready to sort of take the fight. And, and then Kafulathon got a little bit sort of strayed from his team and, and got picked off as a result. And yeah, like you said, this golden experience lead is slowly, slowly slipping from, from the Legion's hands. And I mean, if he goes on this for any longer, it could uh, could spell disaster for, for the Legion team. Yeah, I, I'm really feeling like Cthulhu Fent unfortunately needed uh, another item or two going into that team fight. He was sitting on literally just plated greaves and a blood chalice. And you're talking about no vestments, you're talking about uh, relatively low armor, although he has started to pick up making his soul bulwark with the double chain mail here. Um, but now that he's got these items, I think he's definitely going to be a little bit sturdier in the team fight. He's going to be able to actually get in there and cause the kind of chaos that you expect out of Cthulhu Fun. Um, but I, I think that he really needed to have a little bit more farm coming out of lane. Maybe he's missing a few too many CS. Maybe he was just not being in lane enough. But when you're 1v2 against the Madman, shutting him down the way that you do, expect it to be a little bit higher than 270 GPM. Yeah, and I agree. I think it's because he didn't actually have a hatchet in when he was laning. And that obviously makes a massive difference if you're, particularly if you're going 1v1 against another melee. So that could definitely be a fact. And, and yeah, he's focused on getting all this armor, but at the same time, his EHP or his effective hit points is, in comparison to, would actually be a lot better if he focused on HP than, than just stacking armor, because obviously armor does increase your effective hit points. Um, as you talk about, he might be in trouble. Wild Hunter Parasite coming in. Yeah, there's three players right here, but uh, Parasite is going to be going ahead and backing up, as does Blitz as he teleports all the way back to base. And the Legion team the grouping up once more in the bottom the lane, tower. but they instead lose their middle lane tower with no response, no defense going to be coming out of that, as more and more items are starting to be picked up here. And now they're deciding that it looks like they're going to want to go for a tier 2 in the bottom lane. Gauntlet is yeah, 100 gold off his portal key. I don't know about this. Yeah, like, and, and they grouped up well too early before they... I mean, they should group up. But, I mean, I think they should wait for the, the portal key on, on Gauntlet. But they had to really know a set objective, and that's why they lost tier 1 without really doing anything. Um, they are going to go for the almost final push. It, it feels like a, a death push. Uh, and I think Hellborn are looking to somewhat defend it. Madman is still staying. Uh, Pharaoh does have a TP. 
uh, as well as Silhouette, so they might even try and defend it if they feel necessary. I mean, Hellbond don't even have to. They're, they're trading the tier 2 top and then they're pushing in mid as well. Uh, and they're sort of punishing this all five strat coming out for, from Legion's side. No, I think Hellborn's perfectly fine taking the trade that they're setting up right now as Demented Shaman is starting to TP up into the top lane. But this is now the opportunity for the Hellborn if they want to take a proper fight, they can. But instead, it's going to be Dimension Shaman and Silhouette squaring off in the top lane. Here comes Wrath of Pharaoh. Dimension Shaman's going to go down. This opens up a uh, clear kill on that tier 2 tower in the uh, top lane. But they're actually not going to go for it. Yes, they are. The Hellborn team is going to go for it as Madman goes invisible. And the Legion team looks like they're going to try to break high ground. Oh, this is so dangerous. Yeah, they're going to have to back up. Yeah, and that's just really well played coming from Hellborn. They, they probably decided that, yeah, okay, look, we've got the late game here. We don't really need to make anything really, you know, hasty decisions in terms of defending. They're only sort of getting a tier two. They're not going to be able to break base, so let's just trade. Uh, we've got the late game, and, and also they secure the kill from Demented Shaman, which is honestly was a little bit of a misplay coming out from Legion. I mean, if you're going to uh, TP back to try and defend the tower, you need to go as five, because obviously uh, Hellborn just took that advantage and, and decided just to, you know, pick him off with, with the Thera hook, as well as the silhouette all attacks, and, and it just wasn't enough for, for Dementor Shaman to survive, and that just gives them the tower as well as a, another sort of kill. So they trade a, a lot better uh, compared to the leading side right there. Now, I got to point out the items here on the Hellborn side. I really actually like the way that they're choosing to itemize. Uh, Helm of the Black Legion here on Pharaoh, in addition to his Mystic Vestments. Silhouette going from the Nullstone straight into what I presume is going to be a shrunken head. They realize that they don't need to build up a ton of damage. That if they're able to survive the initial onslaught, which is your hook, your ultimate coming in from Gauntlet, Cthulhuvent there with his ultimate and his stun, Magnus ultimate as well as his stun, if you're able to survive that, you're going to have the damage to clean up the opposing team. Like, it's just going to happen. So they're really focusing on building the survivable items first rather than itemizing for damage, rather than itemizing for additional farming. And I think that's really going to behoove them as they do need to take uh, some team fights probably in the next seven minutes or so. They're going to have to take a team fight at a, tier at a base at a uh, Concord. So, really no, liking that yeah, one. I, I Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Like, they've got, like, like you said, the late game, they, they don't really need to, you know, have the sort of late game peak at 18 minutes they can just wait for you know 10-20 minutes when they get those other arms as long as they can sort of survive the the initial onslaught coming in from, from the leading side they should be fine and i definitely do agree with you i do love the itemization the only thing i'd like to see them do is sort of start pushing mid and bottom right now you see the legion already grouped up as five and, and if you don't want to uh, sort of fight them that's fine but you need to be trading you can't be farming ancients while um they're sort of taking the tier one tower they do finish up the ancient and they're going to take the combo which i think is almost better than taking the tier two or, or the tier three mid Absolutely. legion don't they do have a ward here but don't think they're going to be able to sort of spot them out and if they can get this combo from here definitely a better trade than, uh, than losing their tier one this is a classic trade uh top tier one for a concord and in fact they get mid tier two yeah. as well um, that was actually from Parasite. He was in a Hell Cannon over there, starting up that push. And not only is this going to be able to get a token of life either the Madman or the Silhouette, this is actually going to deny a Concord kill and a token of life from the Legion team. Because after they knock down this top tier 2 tower, Legion team is likely going to want to either take the mid tier 2 or Concord. Those are their two options. And now that Concord is no longer available, they've got one less objective to complete before they have to break down into the high ground. Because this yeah. is an objective-based gaming team. The they need to continue tower. taking those objectives to keep the momentum going or they have no hope in the game. You, you take away that Concord objective, all of a sudden they have to go high ground. That's risky. And right now it's actually going to be six towers down in favor of the Hellborn team at 20 minutes. But high ground achieved here by the Legion. This is about to be a big team fight one way or the other. Man, man, going to be stalking on in. There's the Wrath of Pharaoh. Going to catch Cthulhu. But he's going to go ahead and trample on out of here. But Gauntlet is going to go down. Magma's going to be able to get a two-man eruption plus Lava Surge. And it down goes Blitz. Looks like Parasite's very low as well. But Cthulhu going to have to be jumping on out of there. The Death Lord is going to miss. But the auto attacks from Silhouette are going to be enough. Four players down in favor of the Hellborn team. And make it five. Double tap coming in for our man, the Madman. No and that is the you. danger of breaking high ground as this resource lead is tilted completely in favor of the Hellborn. 
Yeah, I just don't think Legion needs to go high ground that quickly. I mean, I know you know they have to group up and get something because you know they're not they're getting out farmed simply and they don't have the late game. But they're still the, the tier two mid and and obviously you can even just take resource lead in terms of the enemy jungle as well. You don't need to rush and make such a hasty decision because fighting against a token as well as going high ground is just something you don't want to be doing. I mean, they're already behind in terms of golden XP before that fight and now they're so far behind and it's looking very very grim here for for the Legion side. I think I gotta disagree. I think they actually needed to do that they were in a situation where that was going to be their only opportunity to actually have a decent amount of damage on the enemy base they started to back probably about a second too late unfortunately and that's really they didn't have the information to know exactly when they needed to so they were going on their best instincts and unfortunately for them wrath of the pharaoh comes in and all of a sudden you've got a team fight that's being forced you can't just leave two players behind at that point. You, you take the team fight, and it didn't go their way. Um, and that's not something the Legion team wants to do. They want to have all the team fights start on their own terms with the double portal keys on Gauntlet and Magnus. And, of course, Cthulhu Foot, who's going to be able to set up the big charges. That didn't work out, and they, of course, lose the team fight. Probably going to happen again here in the middle lane as Demented Shaman is in trouble. But a nice three-man stun going to be coming in from Magnus. Madman is able to walk away, no problem. Here's Silhouette, though. She does have the token of life, so she's happy to spend that if she's able to get a kill. And Blitz going to be coming in with the ultimate, but another two-man stun on the Illusion and Blitz. Blitz is very low on HP. Madman comes in. Barrel Roll going to be finishing off Demented Shaman, and here comes Parasite. Going to be able to finish off the Magnus as well as Gauntlet. And Blitz is up in the front line. Going to be trying to block off Cthulhuphant. And with the body blocks coming in, they just need a stun to interrupt the TP, and they're going to find it with the Blitz stun. Four players down once more, and this one's looking all but wrapped up for me. Yeah, I just I think I've got to say, but I think the Hellborn have played this really, really well, honestly. Uh, they've done the exact perfect trades they need to. They played well in the laning phase, and, and they've got kind of a, a nice, well-rounded lineup as well. I like the sort of Parasite gank as well as the, the Blitz as well, and, and it's nice to see sort of Silhouette having a, a good time in the competitive scene as well. Uh, definitely has uh, a good potential as well, and I'd be, like to see how it works in the top, top tier as well. Uh, because I, I love this hero. It's honestly one of my favorites, and to see it really well played here as well is, is, is good to see. Yeah, and she's definitely been one that has been making a little bit of a comeback on the competitive scene. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the match that we're going to be casting later today. Mm. Uh, we had talked oh, yeah. about this uh, a little bit about uh, Instant Reflex, your former team, and notably a player by the name of Marcus Moy, who plays a uh, pretty oh, damn yeah. good silhouette, if I'm recalling Best correctly. silhouette in the world. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I've played on his team, and I remember when I was captain only like a couple of weeks ago, and we were so looking forward to this patch because we were pretty much going to almost instant pick Silhouette every single game for him. Because uh, honestly, I mean, there's been games where we almost a whole team of Fed, and he, he's almost solid the, the enemy team on V5. We've, we've played a few scrims actually as well um, with, with Silhouette in the patch, and he plays it so, so, so fantastic. But at the same time, there's a particularly good Silhouette player on, on the other team. Uh, who he's going to be facing against in the upper bracket in the next match. Uh, Beef, I don't know if you can tell the viewers who they'll be playing against, but well, I mean, some old legends. We, we've kind of hinted at it, but uh, the opposing team, going by the name of Potato, uh, we'll talk about it here in a moment. Keep you guys salivating. As Man Man is in some trouble, Lava is going to be coming in, as well as the chain reactions. And down he goes. So, a well coordinated gank by the Legion team. And this should convert pretty easily into a tier 2 mid. Um. From there, they might actually have the opportunity to take high ground. This is an overleveled madman with a 55 second res time, actually. So, they might have the opportunity to at least force a buyback as the Demanded Chomper is dropping heal bombs. This defensive tower definitely going to go down. Each team got to decide real quick whether they're going to go for this or not, and it looks like they will fall back. So, still a little bit of a sour taste in their mouth after the last engagement. But back to this other team, Potato. You guys might have heard about some of these names here. We got uh, got some people by the name of Zibby, Fabelli, Noob G, Minuts. Uh, who's the other Krebson. one? Krebson. Krebson. Yeah, from the former Lions team. Oh, I mean, I'm already celebrating some already. Legends, I'm not even in the game. Some real legends is Magnus going to go in with a lava surge. That was questionable. The Gulifant eats a creep from the puzzle box and dies. And now Blitz going to be able to get the ultimate off on two. Down goes Torture. Dimension Shaman going to join him in a six feet under position. And now Gauntlet and Magnus going to be running as fast as they possibly can. 
porting in between interdimensional rifts with their portal keys, and it looks like they're going to be able to get away, but with three players down, I mean, there's no reason why the Hellborn team can't force this situation. Yeah, and it looks like they're already pushing mid already. Uh, I think they know this game's almost over. Uh, I mean, they've still got the, the token. No, they don't have the token anymore, but I mean, they've got all the items they need right now uh, to push in, and they're so far ahead in terms of XP. 28,000 experience ahead. I mean, just look at the levels. Level 15 fairy levels are silhouette compared to sort of just level 10s and level 7s. So oh, good hook onto Madman. And Madman could go down once spells. more. It looks like he will not quite able to get away. And Cthulhu Flint going to be in the middle right here. Is he going to be able to get off any kind of decent stun? It's not looking like it. Silhouette's actually very low. Gauntlet needs to get off one more big hit, but not going to happen. Sped away by Blitz. Silhouette's able to get out of there. Here comes Magmus in his own filth. Somebody needs to teach this guy how to hit the eruption. No flame, but uh, that definitely was not what his team needed right there. That was one of their avenues back into the game. And the Hellborn team is going to oh recoup, God, but a hook. big hook going to be coming in. It's a very tanky Pharaoh with a barrier idol, though. It's still what able to port back in. Gets the sixth kill of the game on Praise Killer, and then ports out to the Illusion. Cthulhu Foot is in some trouble. Parasite's going to be looking for another leech going, here in man. two seconds. Yeah, not going to happen. And the Mauler even down. going down as well. Uh, yeah, and I think this might be the racks. Now they are going to back off actually. Uh, they don't want to risk it. I mean, they're so far ahead, but at the same time, it's something you sh just shouldn't do at the same time. I mean, if you're almost guaranteed the win, what's the point of just almost potentially throwing it if you're in? So sure. they're going to make the safe play. Just go back, full, uh, farm a little bit more, uh, regen up, and then probably just take the, the mid racks uh, you know, when, when they're all five again. But I have to say, I mean, the only thing that's keeping the Legion side in this game is Dr. Cruz on these hooks. These hooks, man, are. Almost super KG esque, to be fair. <laughs> Legendary hooker. He's returned to BMG, by the way. I don't know if yeah, you've, no, you've I've heard, heard that, that news. Yeah, I know. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, it is indeed. And we've actually, uh, Hauntour does have an interview set up with uh, a representative from BMG as well as BMG's manager to talk about quite a few situations revolving the number one team in Haunt. Um, so expect to see that out on Hauntour.com uh, probably by mid next week. I'm looking forward to it. Seeing what the guys over there from Sweden have to say. Always a fun group of guys to talk to. Yeah, I mean, they are called BMG, but like, to me, deep, deep down, they're still Lions, you know? Yeah, <laughs> me too. I saw a Lions fanboy boy at heart. Yeah. Oh, good old Lions. But, uh, yeah, back to this game, though, I mean, uh, I, I, I try and try and try and like, you know, give some kind of hope for Legion, but it's looking very, very bleak for them. 29,000 experience down, 21,000 gold lead. I mean, and it's not like to say that we haven't seen a, a comeback of this nature, but on the other side, it's, they did have a Moon Queen, so. And this Legion side is kind of all sort of bummed out in terms of late game potential, so. Going to be exceedingly difficult, especially with Silhouette choosing not to finish up the Shrunken Head, as I had expected her to do. Um, she instead went for the portal key to get the mobility and the aggression into a shield breaker for the raw damage. Still sitting on that mighty blade for a little bit of uh, tank potential, but she's going to be blinking forward right now, most likely with the log in hand. Nope, actually doesn't get the log off. Yeah, yeah, the but, range out of range, pretty much. Uh, she's actually going to port out to the illusion. Magnus going to be able to get a stun on that illusion. Yay! And Torture going to be going down in the background. Parasite going to be trying to help get a kill at the beginning here. And the Puzzle Box definitely going to be doing a lot of damage. But it looks like the Legion team is starting to fall apart. Demented Shaman is down as well as Torture. So the dynamic duo resting together once more. Blitz being able to get out of here on a B-Stick of health. And now going to be able to get a stun onto Magmus. Will Mag be able to chase him down? No, what are you yes. doing? Oh my god. <laughs> Extremely questionable plays coming out of our Blitz player right there. But in the end... Does it matter? It does not. Uh, GG's coming out right here. Is our guys from Evil Activities going to be walking away with the 2-0 win over Throws of Throws? And, uh, well, they certainly didn't throw this one. They were never quite in command of this game. But an impressive display coming out of the guys from Evil Activities. And would not surprise me to actually see these guys making into gold division, if not higher. Definitely a firm grasp on the metagame and some skill.
Yeah, I mean, I was definitely, if I had to say one player that really stood out for me was Lucky Lucky. Uh, he played an amazing silhouette, but Trimble as well. But yeah, definitely the whole of Evil activities, they really played very well and, and good drafting come out from Felix as well. But um, yeah, commiserations for the Legion side, which the name escapes me. But um, I mean, even they, you know, they were all right. I mean, just maybe a little tighter on the drafting and they had a, they had a chance to be a good team as well, definitely. So we'll have to keep an eye on the guys from Evil Activities. They're, of course, going to continue to progress in the loser's bracket. Knocked down nice and early yesterday. But uh, if they continue to have a